Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. Amen. I want to say tonight, it's still daylight.
to seek the Lord. Amen. If it weren't for you guys and the prayers that I have felt, I would have been destroyed. But I have two words. But God. But God. But the grace of God. I have found in some of the darkest time of my life that when I needed someone to talk to me about my troubles, all I needed was him because he's my counselor. I have found that in some of the darkest time of my life that when I needed peace, he is the peacemaker. He does. He's the one that gives you peace. And I found in the darkest times of my life that when I needed joy, it didn't come from anything come else but right. from him and what he's done for me and who he is. Who he is is enough to praise him for a million yes, years. Yes, and I don't yes, know, I plan on praising him for a million yes, years anymore. Yes. I found that I'm not going to let things get me down anymore. I'm going to trust and lean in him. Yes. Not on my own understanding yes. because I'm confound every time I lean on my own understanding. Right. I trip all of my own self. Right. On my own yes. Yes. So I am through leaning on my own understanding. Yes. I don't have to understand things. I just have to know that he's got yes. it. He's got yes. it. He's got it. Yes. And I have to learn to trust him and right. follow him. Yes. And when I think I can't go on anymore, just pick that foot up and put it right in front of the other. Yes. Right. And know that he's my strength right. and he is a lamp unto my path and a light unto my feet. He's, he's, he's everything that I need and yes. I don't need anything else. And I, yes. in some of the darkest times of your life is when you can either be destroyed or draw closer to right. him. Right. And I have, I have found that drawing closer to him has way more benefits. Oh, it does. Yes. I'm tired of sitting in depression Amen. and in loneliness oh, yes. when there's no need to. Because no right. I'm not alone. He's a brother that sits oh, yes. close. He's, a, he's, a, he's one that sits closer yes. than a brother. Yes. He said he would go with me where? Yes. All the way to the end. Yes. All the way to the end. So I'm going to keep pressing toward that mark of the yes. high calling of Christ Jesus. And I'm going to commit before you all today that I'm going to be a better servant I'm going to be a better church member. Oh, yes. and most importantly, I'm going to be a better child of God. Oh, yes. So I thank God. I thank God that He saved me. Yes. And that He sustained me. And I thank God that I don't, even though I don't know what tomorrow holds, He holds it. Yes. He does. He does. And I know He's got a work for me to do yes. now because He's spoken it very expressly yes. to me over the last several months. I know that there's something there waiting. And even though I may not know it now, it's not keep me. It's not going to keep me from seeking it. Yes. Seek and you shall find. Yes. And so I'm going to keep seeking knowing yes. that I will find. Yes. And knowing that this isn't the end of me, this dark time that I've been going through for a while, this is only the beginning. Yes. He never brings you through something for no purpose. Right. He brought me through everything I've been through for a reason. Yes. To make me stronger. Yes. To lean on him more. Yes. To trust in him. Yes. And, and, and not in my own self anymore. Right. I've trusted in myself way too much and, and, right. and tried to figure things out on my own. When sometimes you just you don't need to try to figure it out. Right. You just got to know that he will work all things for good. Yes. To them that love him and are called according yes. to his purpose. Yes. And I know that I've been called according to his purpose. Oh, yes. I want to thank each and every one of you personally for your prayers. I felt them for your love. I felt it. And just know that those prayers and that love is returned. Don't think for a second I'm not praying for each of y'all. I'm calling y'all out by name. Quite often the Lord brings every one of y'all at some point in time up in my prayers at home. And I know it's for a reason. I don't need to know it. He does. And he's already touched it before I've even spoken. Oh, yes. But I thank God for being here tonight. God. And giving me the strength to keep pressing on. Amen. And, uh, and just, just, I'm just grateful. I've got a whole sense of gratefulness now that I've never had before. And I'm thankful for it. And I stand in awe that I have a Savior that loves me so much that he's there with outstretched arms to catch me every single time I fall and to draw me. You said it this morning. No man can come to him unless the Spirit draw him. That's the right. Spirit this whole time has been drawing me. Yeah. He's been drawing me and I felt it. Sometimes I'm stubborn and I go against that. But I thank God that I finally surrendered. I finally surrendered. It's not my will, but I want his to be done. Yeah.
something so bad and there was nowhere else to go. Jeanette Manning came up to me and put her hand on my arm and said, you're such a strong Christian, walk like David did. And at that time, I wasn't walking at all. My knee was in such bad shape. I went in for a knee replacement. And when I got told that I could walk, I told her, I'm going to go to church with you. Mm-hmm. And I've been coming ever since. <laughs> we never know who God is calling us. We never know what we're going to call us to. But he called me to this church to put a whole new life of education around me. Yeah. It's been like I was in school again. <coughs> I came every day. Every time I could come, it was to come to learn some more. Amen. And thank God yeah. for his written word. And if you yeah. don't think yeah. your life is dramatic enough, you just read the Bible. There is so much drama in that book. I'm <laughs> alive when I see Elijah out running chariots. <laughs> and all that so those things happening, it's just like it's overwhelming to me how yes. great God is. Yes. Oh, yes. And I thank him so much for all the teaching, all the, <laughs> all the things that I never understood. I tried to understand for so long and I got so frustrated. It was really horrible. And what is being taught in the apostate church, which I went to for years, I had nowhere else to go. To go to church. But it's been so great. So great and so eye-opening. And why people cannot read the Bible and understand it. And if, if you can't understand how to how wonderful Pastor explains things to us. Right. Open your ears and listen and read yeah. the yeah. yeah. It's just so wonderful to me. And I yeah. thank God for Praise this. God. I thank God for so many things. Yeah. He has kept yeah. me. He has blessed me beyond yeah. all measure. Yeah. Yeah.
Because everything that I've heard, everything that I have witnessed, I bought it and it's not for sale. The blood of Jesus that I bought is not for sale. Hallelujah, my worship, my praise. Hallelujah, it's not for sale. So I want the devil and everybody that's watching to let them know that everything that I receive from this man of God is not for sale. I bought it and you hate it. I'm not going to compromise with nobody. Amen. Hallelujah. Since the open, I bought it. Hallelujah. About three or four years now. It's probably got some dividends on it now. And I want them to know that everything that I have bought for the it is not for sale. My anointing is not for sale. My praise is not for sale. Everything, everything has been taught. Amen. From the time I got here up until the night. And I want everybody that's watching, every preacher that's watching, to let you know that I will not compromise in everything that I have learned. I want you to know it's not for sale. I'm finished. It's deeper in my heart now than it's ever been. 
But I, I listen to people and I watch posts and I kind of sometimes, you know, on Facebook and I try to reach out to people and I think of some of these young people that are troubled and they're all mixed up and they come to church and you see the Lord touch them, but it's so temporary. And I want to say to them, and I tell my children this, uh, I don't have anything else to tell you except run to the church. Amen. I can tell you how, maybe how to save you money a little bit, uh, maybe how to clean your house, maybe how to whatever you might need, I don't know, in the natural. I might can help you on some of those things. I've been around a while and I've done a few things. And I've been blessed. But when it comes right down to it, I don't have anything else to say except run to the church. When you're in trouble and you don't know what to do, when you're in trouble and your life's falling apart, and you don't know where your next, you know, how what tomorrow holds, or how your children are going to be, or you don't know what to say to your children because you don't know how to teach them about God. I had a nephew just a few weeks ago tell me, hey, Uncle, I need you and enjoy and ain't got to, to help me because I don't know how to teach my children about God. Uh, the, uh, I said, come to the church. Yeah. That's right. There's yeah. nothing else to say, saints. We can't, right. we can't, we can't yeah. pat them, pity and yeah. pity with them, and pat with them, and and fix it for them. Uh, come, some of these young people. I want to just reach out on Facebook and say, come to the church. Yeah. Get yourself grounded in the church where the Word of God is being taught. Where there's truth, where there's people of right. understanding, right. where there's saints of God that have fought the battle yeah. day after day, year after year, month after month. It's not a one-time sweep. No, it's it's not. not a one-time sweep. No, we not. gotta we gotta take it day by day. Sometimes you take it hour by hour. Yeah. Sometimes your life is so heavy yeah. and uh, whatever you're going through will come yeah. against you and and just life itself will be so heavy that it's one hour at a time. Oh, one right. hour at a time, oh, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help yes. me, Jesus. Help us today, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me tomorrow, God. Help me to know, Lord, what to do. What should I do, God? Do I wait for you? Do I stand still? Do I move? Yes. He oh. will let us know yes. when to do that. That's how we serve God. Yes. One yes. step yes. at a time. Yes. Yes. One step at a time. And we can't be so hopped up all the time. We can't. We cannot be so hopped up all the time, right, whether right. it be with music, whether it be right. with numbers, whether it be with programs or whatever in the world people look to to keep them hopped up. If, if God's people had never been in a valley, the word of God wouldn't have what happened right. in the valley. Right. Right. If God's people had never, if they'd always been on the mountain, all the songs we'd ever know would be about us. What it was right. like on the mountain. Right. We got to be real about this thing. Right. We got to be real. We can't yeah. just, you know, I'll be all hopped up all the time and think ever. Well, you're right, Brother Shannon. God does have it, but you still have to live it one day at a time. Right. Amen. You still have to live it one day at a time. Sure. God is so good. And Amen. my prayer is for this generation coming up to <laughs> help them to understand. We call them the microwave generation. We call them whatever they are. They want it right now, or they Amen. they want to electronically fix it however they can, or whatever. But God help us help and them. help them and help us to teach them. Take it one step at a time. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Your life didn't really get the mess you're in overnight. Right. So it will right. get fixed overnight. You're right, you're right. But you have to plant your feet somewhere. Come on, man. There is, there is no point in jumping from here to here to here. We just have to say it. Yeah, that's true. You just have to say it. Yeah. It's not belittling any other church. It's not belittling anything or any, you know, whatever people think they need to do. But I, for one, know what I have to do. Right. I had to plant my feet where the Word of God was being taught yeah. and take it from service to service, here a little, there a little, and every day, every service, every time the Spirit of God moved, every time I read the Word of God, every time the man of God spoke, and still, is it's still that way, then I'm learning, and I'm growing in God, and I'm not giving up. Right. I'm not giving up. If we're not, if we're not grounded, we'll just give up. 
That's right. it. Right. If we're not grounded, we just give up. Amen. So God's people have to get real. Amen. We have to get real. We just have to. And we have to choose to come out right. from among them and be deceptive. Yes. The greatest thing that God's people can do, from my understanding and for me, come out of the world. Come what in the name of God did right. the world ever right. do for me? That's right. it. What has the world ever done for me that's right. toward my eternal life? Destruction is what the world holds for us. That's, that's, right. that's what the world holds for, for, for itself. That's what the world holds for itself. But when God's people can understand, come out from among them and God. be deceptive, then we're headed for the kingdom. Yes, Amen. We we're headed for the kingdom. And I'm so grateful. And I appreciate the church. I always say that. I'm like Sister Carol and I. If you've, if you've not had it and then you you find it, Brother Calvin, mm -hmm. you don't want to give it up for nothing. Right. Then there's no way it's because that belongs to me. It's what God has given us. Yes. And I'm grateful to be here and I'm grateful to be a part of what God's doing. Amen. 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 Amen.
Well, it seems to be both less and less, please. He said it's less and less, and so I have to thank God for this. But so Friday, he says, I'm going to have this God come in the church. And she said, and what's funny is, and what's funny, keep asking her questions. And she said, you keep asking me about stuff that I can't answer. And, you know, and she's been watching the live stream, and she's been listening to Catholic minister, and, you know, because, you know, we were talking about it on the way to work, so I went out to tell her about different things and what the church is doing and what is, what type of fellowships we're having and, and different stuff, and she did decide and get interested. And so, and so Friday morning, she kept talking about different things, and, and I'm sitting there, you know, like, I'm not in, I, I, I don't want to talk about anything. I just want to go to work, you know, and go home. But she kept saying, you know, this is happening, and this is doing this, and her son keeps asking her these questions. And then she started actually talking about more stuff, and I said, Lord, I'm just thankful that, you know, you have, you, as much as I'm trying to leave that place, you won't let me leave until you have what you're going to have. Yes. And she mentioned the person, her and her son, maybe that one person that God is after. That's true. Because she's not the only person that has ever asked for a ride, but she's the only person that the Lord has laid on my heart to give a ride to. And I'm like, I'm so thankful for where I am. I'm yes. 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 Okay. 
care if you stand up there and preach like you said, Pastor. If you stand up there and preach and you know the word of God, but if your flesh, if your flesh means more to you to where you can compromise what you know is right, then oh my Lord, oh my Lord, I don't care how righteous you think you are, but if you can turn and sell that and sell it, Brother Calvin, my God, but oh Lord, open our eyes. Let us see that hope. Let us see the Lord. That's what I pray. Can you imagine what would happen? Oh, my Lord. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. Jesus. 
God and no God. I am powerful, like the pastor said. I am powerful. I don't want to be pitiful. I don't want to wallow in my sorrow and the problems that I'm going through. I need to stand on his word and be righteous, be filled with joy. I mean, he is a joyful God. We're not supposed to be saying we're Christians, and but we walking around with our heads hanging down. I don't want to be like the world. I'm here to witness to the world. I'm here to tell them there's hope, there's joy, there's peace. There's strength for you. Like, I'm here to tell them about God. And, and they're looking at me. I want to be a light. So they can see that there's Jesus in me. I want them to know, yes, you're different. I want them to know, like, my job tested me all the time. And I thank God for teaching me patience. Because patience was the worst thing for me. And he's taught me patience because... You know, I deal with so much, and I and I'm, I'm and I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, like we're listening to Christian music at work, and so I get to sing, you know, and, and worship God every day that I go to work, and that is only God, you know, because I don't have to listen to these other radio stations because I've changed, I've gotten rid of these things, and now that I have Ty Asia, I want to show her what a Christian woman's supposed to be, you know, I want to be an example that God, so that God can use me, you know, and I, I want to be used, and I know that I have to surrender of myself. I know that I have to take off layers of myself, things that are unpleasing, you know, to him, and I'm thankful for the word, because it's the true word of God, and it, and it convicts my heart. It convicts me, you know. I have to search myself daily, and I'm like, well, man, God, I guess I shouldn't be that way. I'm the worst road rager person. When somebody get, gets, um, cuts me off and does stupid, you ask my agent. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, I'm like, oh God, forgive me. I shouldn't have did that. Like, I do that stuff because I'm God, I'm trying, you know, to to work on myself. You know, I shouldn't get upset. I shouldn't get mad, but I do. You know what I'm saying? But I'm human. We are human. We're going to make mistakes. But if we fall, we have to get back up. Just because we fall don't mean you stay there. While we still have the time, while God is still waiting on, on the throne, waiting on us, we need to get back up and keep our eyes on the prize. I'm just, I'm just really thankful. I'm really thankful and I'm grateful that I'm here. I'm thankful that, you know, God is really using me and he's helping me. And there are a lot of things in my life that, you know, that God is still dealing with. I talked to my dad one time. And he was telling me how I need to make God the lover of my soul. Yes. You know, I need to fall in love with him. Yes. You know, you want to fall in love with cars and money and materialistic things. But I need to fall in love with Jesus. When I make him the lover of my soul, yes. worship is in me. Praise is in me. I don't need music. I don't need anything. You know, because it's all in me. And I just thank God that I'm, I'm learning these things. You know, I'm not perfect, but I can admit that. I commit that he's still working on me Amen. to make me what I ought to be. Yeah. It might take him a week, a month, a year, okay? <laughs> but he is still yeah. working on me. Yeah. Because yeah. Why? Because I am yeah. willing. Yeah. You know, I'm not I'm not putting a block up for him. Yeah. Like, whatever it is, God, use me. Whatever yeah. I have to do, yeah. use me. If I need to let go of some things, yeah. I'm, I'm supposed to be willing to let it go. Yeah. And until we be willing, right. willing to fight this fight, yeah. we're willing right. to deal with, um, to separate ourselves from God, that is the only way that we're going to to fight this battle. But I love that song because the battle was on his heads and the victory is ours. And we need to know that. So I just thank God for all he's done for me. So kind.
<laughs> but it, oh, I got so many. It's just, it's just wonderful. I appreciate that. And Brother, Brother Calvin was saying somebody would get up and, and you know, sing a song, you know, and all like that. And I was and I was thinking of that old song that had been, you know, you touched my eyes that I might see. flesh, uh, to, to fulfill the lust of the flesh, 
and that's a lot of people that's where they want to go they want they want to be in a place where they're free to do what they want that's not liberty that's bondage uh, if, if this place is bondage uh, I, t- uh, I was telling somebody the other day I said if this is prison give me a life sentence <laughs> if this is prison give me a life sentence I'll take it <laughs> amen uh, because we are prisoners of Christ amen but uh, and, and, and a lot of people don't understand that sometimes they think that coming to Christ relieves them of every responsibility but all he said was is you take off one yoke but you put on my yoke, right. which means that it doesn't uh, alleviate uh, the, 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 the uh, I don't want to say it, it doesn't alleviate our responsibility. Right. Uh, it rather just gives us responsibility we can bear. Right. Uh, and, and serving God is not hard. I love what Sister Rita said, it's such a blessing. Yeah. Serving God is not hard. The way the transgressors are. In fact, the apostle said his commandments are not grievous. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, what they do is they keep this old man under control is what they do. Right. And, uh, and, and how many of you all remember when you were out in the world, you were doing your thing, uh, and you started to reap the consequences of that? Was, was, how did you feel about that? But, you know, I've been in church, and I followed the Lord, and I've also reaped the consequences of that. Yeah. And it's joy unspeakable. For the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's always going to be a consequence to every action. Just make sure you're in the right place. Amen. And uh, so my heart has been so touched uh, tonight. I've been so blessed. I love what Brother Calvin said. Buy it, sell it, not. Since I bought this a long time ago. I've had every opportunity to sell it. But there's not a person that's got enough money to pay for what I got. As I'm telling you, you can't value this thing in currency. Amen. <laughs> this thing is more valuable than pleasure. It's more valuable than money. It's more valuable than possessions. You ain't got enough to cause me to give up what I got. And again, going back to Sister Lindy, she said, I didn't realize how important the doctrine was. And a lot of people think that doctrine is just... You know, you hear it a lot. Doctrine is so divisive. We shouldn't talk about doctrine. We should just leave doctrine alone. Every man that stands behind the pulpit and opens up his mouth to preach from the scripture is talking doctrine. That is an erroneous and irrelevant statement to even begin to make. Because if you're preaching from the word of God, you are talking doctrine. Now, maybe some of them really don't want to talk doctrine. And, and you can tell. I mean, you just listen long enough and you realize, hey, you don't like doctrine, do you? You don't like the word. Uh, but but doctrine is so important to us. Doctrine, Brother Deloy Smith says all the time, he says doctrine dictates our behavior. Doctrine really dictates our behavior. And false doctrine will produce evil behavior. But I'm telling you, the truth will produce righteousness and holiness uh, in our lives. And that's what people have to understand. We're not here. Uh, I love what Sarita said. He's still working on me. That's where we're at. We're just on the potter's wheel. And the Lord is working on us till he gets us to where we are vessels of honor. Amen. Uh, There's an old song that that we used to sing. I don't know if, I don't ever remember hearing it in Kingsport. I know we sang it in Elkville. uh, But it goes, Over and over, he molds me and makes me into his likeness. He fashions the clay, a vessel of honor I am today. All because Jesus, he didn't throw the clay away. Isn't that your testimony? Over and over, he molds me and makes me into his likeness. He fashions the clay, a vessel of honor I am today. All because Jesus. He didn't throw the clay away. How many of y'all are glad he didn't? But over and over, he molds me and makes me into 
his likeness, he fashions the clay, a vessel of honor, I am today, all because Jesus, he didn't throw the clay away, sing it one more time, over and over, he molds me and makes me into his likeness. He fashions the clay, a vessel of honor. I am today all because Jesus. He didn't throw the clay away. Amen. Lord, keep working on me till I look like you. Amen. And I so agree with Sister Brooks. Life is short. Amen. And Sister Brooks, that is that is the scripture I desire to be able to say Amen. when I am on my deathbed, yeah. getting ready to go to my long home, yeah. getting ready to rest from my labors. I hope that I can say that I fought a good fight, yeah. that I finished my course, that I kept the faith. And now there is a crown of righteousness laid up for me, but not for me only, but for all those that love this appearance. Isn't anybody glad? That God didn't stop in the New Testament giving rewards to people. That all those that love His appearance, and so it's wonderful. I love what Brother Shannon said about uh, about even in the darkest times of my life, uh, He's still God. He's still there, and He's still working. And Sister Opal is so right. We need to get real. People have this fantasy. We're living in a we're living in a chemically altered generation where everybody has to be up all the time. Everybody has to be on the high all the time. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Don't come to the church and expect to be on the high all the time. Because there are times you're going to mourn. Hallelujah. But if you'll hold on, he'll turn your mourning into dancing. There are times the word of God's going to burn you down to ashes. But if you'll hold on, he'll give you beauty for your ashes. There are times that you're going to go through so much that a spirit of heaviness is going to fall on you. But if you'll hold on, God will give you the garment of praise. And that is what the church is here to let you know is that if you just don't quit, you're going to get through it. You're going to get on the other side of it. I'm completely in agreement. You young folks that are watching this and watch this live stream, quit finding every reason to be out of the house of God. You're never going to have victory in the world. God didn't set it up that way, and none of us are important enough for God to modify his word to fit our personal preference. If you want to be free, run to the house of God. Run to the church of Jesus Christ. My God in heaven. Put yourself there. Plant yourself there. And then ride out every storm. Ride out every circumstance. Just stay there. Stay in the church and hold on. How many of y'all have ever been through something and you came to church not because you wanted to? You came to church because you knew that you had no other choice. And when you got here, you were discouraged. When you got here, you may have even been, uh, uh, you may have even been uh, 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 frustrated and angry, and, and it may have gone on for weeks, but you just kept coming to the church. You just kept coming to the church. You just kept coming to the church. And I love what Hannah said. Don't miss this river because you might, this might be the time that the church goes down to the stream and picks up the stone you needed to slay your giant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the reason why every time the doors are open, run to the church. Because this might be the service that the very thing that's been weighing you down and depressing you and defeating you and discouraging you, this may have been the service somebody needed to be able to break through to victory. And somebody said, well, I watched it on live stream. But I'm telling you now, live stream is great. Glad we can offer it. But there is nothing like being in the very anointing that God has in the house it's something to hear it. It's another thing to hear it and to feel it. There's something that happens in the church. And somebody may have missed their moment tonight. That God would have brought them out of depression into peace. Out of discouragement into encouragement. Out of anxiety into joy. Amen. Because we're going to go down to the river saints every time.
time we come here. And we're going to pick up a stone. And we are set for the defense of the gospel. And the defense of the gospel is not simple. And it's not always pleasant. But it's always worth it. Amen. It's always worth it. Amen. Uh, and so I thank God for the church. Uh, I thank God for everything he's doing. Uh, Sister Carolyn's testimony was so wonderful yes. to me. Uh, but my God, all these questions I've had for all these years. Amen. Wanted to find an answer but couldn't find one. But I came to the church. Yes. Hallelujah. And somebody said, you all say you're the only church. I don't remember ever saying that. People put those words in my mouth. I don't ever remember saying that, but I do say we are the church. <laughs> we ain't the only one, but we are it. We ain't the only church, got it, but we are it. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can sit there and deny it all you want. I ain't, I'm not saying there's nobody else got the truth, but we got the truth. And it's not for sale, brother Calvin. We are the church, and it's not for sale. We're not the only one, but we're it. <laughs> You're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. God's had 7,000 in Elijah's day. Elijah thought he was the only prophet preaching the truth anymore. He thought everybody else had been given over to the prophet, to the gods of the groves and to Baal. But I'm telling you, God said, I got 7,000. I reserved that to myself that I'm not bowed their knee to Baal. There are thousands of men of God around this world that are still preaching the truth, that are still holding fast to the doctrine of holiness, that are still holding to the doctrine, saints of God, of sanctification and righteousness, there are thousands that have not bowed their knee to the influence or the culture of this world. I'm not saying we're the only ones. I'm just telling you we're it. That's going to blow some of their minds. Some of them ain't going to be able to sleep all night. He said they weren't the only ones, but he didn't. He said they were it. He's got to be contradicted. If you had a revelation of the church, you would know what I'm talking about. The only ones, but we're here. Look at somebody tell them we're here. Tell them we're not the only ones, but we're here. Tell them we're not the only ones got the truth, but we got the truth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I just blew some of their mind. They ain't gonna be able to sleep all week. They're gonna watch us and say, I knew it. Wait a minute, what? Did he try? Huh? What? 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 I knew. Oh, oh. I just blew all their mind. They're just gonna have to. They're gonna have to. <laughs> They're going to have to go tell Jesus all the time. <laughs> I thank God for the church. And I love uh, what mom said. Saints of God. Hold on to it. Just hold on. Uh, you don't go very many places. And here we here, still we still have the liberty we have. It's few and far before me. And if you don't know, just operate in the church world for a little bit. You'll find out. This is a very difficult place. In fact, people that come out of the church world have a difficult time understanding how we do things and why we do things the way we do them because they don't understand the freedom. They don't understand the liberty of the spirit. But we're going to hold on to it. We're going to hold on to the truth. It's not for sale. It's not for sale. It's not. We're going to hold on to it. And we are set for the defense of the gospel. That means there's going to be criticism. There's going to be all kinds of things that come our way. Saints of God, our job is just don't quit. Right. Look, the only way the enemy can stop you is to convince you to quit. Right. He cannot force you. Right. Here's the thing about, let me, let me tell you this. Here's the thing about the enemy. He has no power to force a child of God into a place of surrender. Right. He can only subtly convince you to quit. If you keep going, you're going to win. You're going to win. He that endures to the end. Same shall be saying. I'm just going to, you know what? People are saying this. This is going on. My life's falling apart. Just keep being faithful. Right. Wake up. I love what the children say. I tell people sometimes it's 15 minutes at a time. There are sometimes you're in a bout with the enemy in your mind. You've got to make a 15-minute decision every 15 minutes, yes, sir. every five minutes, yes, sir. sometimes every second of, of that moment, right. casting down every thought and every imagination that exalts yes, itself sir. against the knowledge of God. And people say, well, you know, y'all have got mind control over there. Mm -hmm. They got the revelation. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have to tell them. 
I didn't even, brother, they found out our secret. They found out our secret that if you come to New Destiny, we're going to teach you mind control. <laughs> and that's not for sale. <laughs> we're going to teach you you don't have to give in to your thoughts. We're going to teach you that you don't have to give in to your imaginations. But by the power of the Holy Ghost through the Word of God, you can cast them down. And you can get control of your life. So, yes, guilty as charged. We're all about mind control in New Destiny. And guilty. But that's because we believe in a powerful God. Amen. Who called out a powerful people. To do a powerful work. Amen. We're not pitiful. We're not victims of our circumstances. But we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. And what did I tell you all about conquerors being more than a conqueror? There are all kinds of conquerors Amen. that have been conquered. Being more than a conqueror means you are unknown. How do I remain unconquerable? Stay faithful. Just don't quit. It doesn't mean that all the time you're going to be standing at the top of the heap of the pile. Flexing. I bet you Abram stands in the mirror and flexes. I bet you that. Do you do that? He ain't alone because I do the same thing. My wife's like, my God, you act like a 14-year-old boy. A lot of work goes into this. You gotta, you gotta see what you get. <laughs> it's not vanity. I just gotta make sure I'm getting it right. Fifteen minutes at a time. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. This is true. Amen. Thank God that there's a mirror in the bathroom. Thank God there's a mirror in the hallway. Thank God there's a mirror in the bedroom. Thank God there's a mirror in the living room. Come on, come on, Abram. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but not, <laughs> not all the time. Are you going to be at the heap of the uh, at the top of the heap going? There's sometimes. Because you've been wounded from a battle. You've been you've been hurt and beaten. Your job is just don't quit. I may I may be limping, but I'm not quit. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I may be limping, but I'm not quitting. I may be limping, but I'm not quitting. I'm telling you, say to God, I may have to. Listen, thank God that his word is that great staff. Because when I cannot do it, I just lean on the word. How, how are you making it through? Because of the word. How are you continuing to go on? Because I've read the word. I have read the end of the book. And the end of the book says if I don't quit, I will win. So I might have to live. My God in heaven, that woman that had the issue of blood, she had to crawl away. Your job, whether you crawl, whether you have to sit there and, and just scoot on your stomach, whether you have to limp or you can run, your job is just don't stop. Whatever you do. Because this may be the service. That child of God on its knees. Touches the hem of his garment. Amen. 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 I'm going to tell you something. What I love about the church is if you stop, we're going to pick you up. Yes, sir. Now you can tell us to leave you alone. And we'll be glad to oblige whatever your will is. Who said that? Rita. You have to be willing. Yes, if you're going to fall into it and just die there, like, like Laverne said, I, I can now hear it and apply it. And thank God I'm in a place I can hear it so I can apply it. But we're like those people. Let me tell you something. There are people that have come in here at times and they were on the deathbed. You could tell the last bit of spiritual life was leaking out of them. You know what we did? We we're like that man that had his friends. We tear the roof off and we'll take you to Jesus. Because we're not willing to watch you die. And that's the beauty of the church. Because there may be times that you've laid down. And if you lay down at home, you die there. But if you've laid down and you're in the church, we'll bury you. And we'
will carry you to the Lord. There have been many times that many of us in here in the wee hours of the morning have torn the roof off the place. Hallelujah. To get somebody to Jesus. Just don't quit. That's the whole point of this. Fight until you die. And if you'll just fight the, what did the Lord promise the church in, in, in Revelation? Just be thou faithful unto death and you shall receive the crown of life. Just be faithful unto death. Don't quit no matter what. Be faithful and I'll give you a crown of life. So let's keep applying. Let's keep working. Let's keep exercising. Let's keep doing all the things that God has given us power to do. How would you, did, haven't y'all tried to be a good person on your own? That's good, right? Come on up. We're talking about getting real. You know, I'll just be a good person. And you failed every time because you're not good enough to be good. In fact, Paul said that in me that is in my flesh, well, no good thing. What we're saying is God's given us power. And you can say, ain't nobody ever going to be good. The only one good ever going to be Bob. Then you tell me why he's going to say, well done thou. Yeah. He's making me good. He's putting his goodness in me. And people can say, well, I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Then quit fornicating. Quit committing adultery. Quit lying. Quit stealing. Come on, quit drinking. Quit it. Stop smoking. If you're being made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, then you ought to be given power to stop the behavior that is unrighteous. To whom you yield your members to, servants you are. You don't have to go by, you don't have to go far. Some of people say, who are you to judge? You ain't nobody to judge. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you claim to be a child of God and you are continuing in willful sin, your master is Satan. You have given yourself over to the devil. I don't have to judge that. Your fruit is absolutely declaring it. I'm not judging anyone. They judge themselves. But we as children of God, what we're saying is there's nothing in us that has the ability. But when the Holy Ghost comes in, it is Christ in me. That is the hope of glory. There's power in me to overcome all the power of the enemy. Amen. I believe that. There are a lot of people that don't have to believe it, and they don't, and they go to hell over it. I mean, it makes no difference. That's their choice. I am going to preach a gospel of empowerment. I am going to preach a gospel that gives you power to get up out of your victimhood and out of your slave mentality. I'm going to preach a gospel that is going to cause you to be more than a conqueror, that is going to cause you to look at the devil and tell him, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. It is over between me and you. We're separating parties. The communication is done. I'm going on with Jesus. And let the whole world know, saints of God, that if the world don't go, I'm still going. If my family don't go, I'm still going. If everybody around me don't go, I'm going. Because I am not powerless. I am not pitiful. I am not incapable. And I am not weak. I am more than a conqueror. I have power through the Holy Ghost. And I am going to be a child of God who will one day stand before King of Kings. And he will say, you got the victory. You won it, child of God, because you didn't quit. Because you didn't give in. Because you didn't give up. But you were faithful unto death. Now here's a crown of life. And here's what we'll all do. We'll say, Lord, we couldn't have done it without you. We had no power without you. We weren't wise enough without you. And we'll take our crown and we will throw it down at his feet and say, Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive glory. Determined is we're going to be real. We're going to recognize where we are. But then we're going to allow Jesus to do the work necessary to take us where he is. How many of y'all want to go with me? I'm going. I am not pitiful. I refuse to accept that. You can't help yourself. Well, you can like that if you want to. The wages of sin is death. You're going to reap what you sow. Consequences don't change because you claim a faith. 
the consequences change when you let Jesus take yes. control. And I am going to let Jesus have control Amen. and be the child of God. Look at your neighbor one more time. Tell him you're not pitiful. You're not tell him you're not powerless. Tell him you're more than a conqueror. More than you are, and I'm not blowing smoke up here. I believe that. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to motivate you. I believe what I'm telling you. We are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. I don't care. Listen. I read to you, what, where were we at on Wednesday night? I just lost it. It was Peter, Second Peter. Peter was dealing with all of this sin. Sodom and Gomorrah, right. the days of Noah. Uh, there was one other, I think. I just lost it. Anyways, what he was showing was, though, that iniquity was all around them. They stayed in a righteous place with God. Why? Because God knows, the Lord knows how to, uh, to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the ungodly unto judgment. God knows how to do it. And so everybody can say, well, I can't help it. There's so much sin around me. There's so much iniquity around me. I can't, let me tell you something. I try to fight it, but I just can't help it. And God knows my heart. That's a, that's a very dangerous statement to make so flippantly. What God's saying is, I don't care if you are in hell's kitchen and there ain't nothing but sin and perversion and iniquity all over you uh, or all around you. I know how to keep you right in the middle of it. I know how to keep you right. I know how to keep your mind state. I know how to keep you. I know how to reserve you. I know how to keep you from temptation. I know how to do it. So quit, so quit believing the lies. Trust in Christ. He'll keep you. You could be you could be with drugs and alcohol all around you. You could be uh, our young people could be in schools and have all kinds of garbage going on around them. They've got to yield to it because God will keep them right there. God will keep them right there if they let Him. You could be in your workplace and everybody sleeping with everybody's wife and everybody sleeping with everybody's husband and everybody complaining about their marriage and everybody talking about their party life they have on the weekends and how they drink and how they you could be all over that and God said I'll keep you right there I'll keep you as a testimony that I know how to deliver the righteous out of temptation but I can keep you right in the middle of it and the Lord kept Lot and the Lord kept Noah and he saved their families because those men Yielded to the keeping hand of the Lord. Amen. So somebody just tell the Lord, keep me, keep me, keep me. Well, we're going to receive our offering, our tithes. This has been a wonderful. I hope I summarized that nicely. I, I hope I did. If I missed your testimony, don't think it's because it wasn't important. I'm like Sister, I'm like Sister uh, Lindy. If I if, if I mentioned everything that everybody said, we wouldn't leave here tonight. <laughs> But I appreciate every, every, every testimony. I appreciate it. I appreciate every testimony, saints of God. It has blessed my heart. It has, it just, tonight was just a wonderful blessing to me. But we're going to take up our tithes and offerings and everything that helps the work of God move forward. So if we stand to our feet, amen. Remember the Philippines offering? Uh, remember, uh, we'll, we'll make some announcements later. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the spirit of God that has been so powerful in this place. For every testimony, my God, what encouragement our hearts have received tonight from the saints of God, from the word of God, by the spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for giving me the honor to be here tonight. Now we pray as we continue our worship and our giving. That you would bless those tonight that have to give, bless those that may not be able to give tonight, but will give at the next appointed time. And Lord, we believe that you will watch over your word to perform it concerning each one of them. In that mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Brother Brooks, come. Let's receive the offering.
and we will drive down to West Palm and be down there with Brother Joe Garrett. Just talked to Brother Joe Garrett this week, and he's like, Brother, we are so excited, looking forward to y'all coming. And I do believe that uh, that that uh, uh, Brother Joe Morales and his family are going to be down in West Palm with us as well. So uh, we're, we're going to have a wonderful time. We're just going to have flat-out church. Praise God. And you pray for your pastor while I'm down there, that God will give me the right time and the right words. And then uh, I will do my best to be a benefit and a blessing to them. I'm trying to think if there's any other announcements we need to make. Braxton. I didn't mention Braxton as well. Braxton is not feeling well. That's why Sister Chandra is here, not here today. She was watching him Tori had to work, and Braxton has just not been feeling well. Now, he's the wildest, craziest man for about two hours, and then he drops. <laughs> but pray for him that God will touch him and that God will help him. And I want y'all to check in on your pastor's wife while I'm gone. I'm going to be gone from Thursday all the way till Monday. Don't let her be alone. Don't let her be sitting. She's going to have kids watching them all week. So somebody say, hey, Sister Chandra, I'm going to come help you wash some kids. Or I'm gonna, we're going to go to dinner. Do something. <laughs> have some fellowship with her. And let her know how much you care about her and love her. Um, so so remember all of that. Is there anything else I'm missing? I'm, I'm thinking I'm missing something, but I can't, can't recall. All right. Well, we're going to close in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Brooks to just close us in a word of prayer. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, God. This evening, Heavenly Father, we're so thankful. Yes, we Lord. praise thee for this day, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you for allowing us to come together. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So lift up the name yes. and praise and song, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. We didn't come this far by ourselves. We come to reach us yes. to you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. And we pray that we 